there, this is Hiba Weber, the founder and CEO of Seller Mobile. Let's take a few minutes to review Seller Mobile's Business 101 dashboard. This dashboard is made up of widgets that are easy on the eyes, but packed with valuable insight. The widgets in this dashboard tell you your best selling products, where your cash flow is stuck, what's going on with your FBA shipments and more. I'll take a few minutes to show you how each widget on this dashboard works, but depending on what stage of business you're in, you might need more insights. And for those brands, Seller Mobile has a completely customizable dashboard that is made up of more advanced widgets that help you understand your unit level economics, your advertising spend, your customer lifetime value, repeat orders, and more. So you can leverage this information and make strategic decisions on how you can improve your margins, your product catalog, your cash flow, and of course, increase your top line revenue. So let's take a look. So the first thing you probably notice is that there is some stuff that's been blurred here um, that will obviously not be blurred when you are logged into your own account, but this is an account that I have invested or business that I've invested in. And so um, I'm just blurring this information um, to keep this um, private. So let's take a look at this dashboard. So the first thing you'll notice is accounts here. You can add multiple seller accounts and look at data at an aggregate level, or you can look at it for an individual account. So here I'm looking at it for one account. Um, the next is marketplaces, same concept. You can look at it for all marketplaces or for one marketplace. So if you are selling in just one marketplace and you've got the rest turned on, um, it really won't impact your data. Um, then we've got the date range here. So um, you can go back up to two years to look at your data, um, but we've got the default for the last 30 days. Um, I find that everything that we do is very relative in terms of data. So um, of course we wanna see how we're trending up or down. And for that, you can actually select what you wanna compare it to. If you are looking at data for the last 30 days, do you wanna compare it to the period before that, which is the 30 days before that, or do you wanna compare it to the year before? depending on how long that you've been in business. Um, for this exercise, I'm going to just compare it to the period before so I can see how my sales have been for this 30 days and then the 30 days before that. So here at the very top, this is your gross revenue. So this is all the revenue that you've generated. And as you can see, if I compare it to the 30 days before, I have increased my revenue by 10%, which is awesome. Um, next here, I look at my cost and fees, and my cost and fees have gone up by 6% as well, which is in red. Next, I look at my gross profit. So my gross profit entails um, all of my cost and fees. This includes my cost of goods for each product. So if you've not yet entered in your cost of goods, there's another video that shows you how to do that. But it's very important to be able to get as close to an accurate gross profit margin as possible. So here my gross profit in the last 30 days has gone up by 20%, which is wonderful. The next widget we've got is recent orders. So this recent order widget tells me what my most recent orders were. So here um, it's looking at the date and time. This is the image of the product. This is the name of the product. And here it's telling me the price at which I sold this product. And then my estimated profit from that particular sale. So um, here I sold it for $30. My estimate profit was $13, which is about 43% of, um, of, of 30. So here you get to not only see the actual cash value, but also uh, you know, we do the math for you so you don't have to do your, your math, the math yourself. Um, next, we show you your best sellers. So these are the products that you have had that you have made the most revenue with in the last 30 days. So here for my best sellers, I've got the image, I've got the name of the product, which when you click it, it takes you to more details about that specific product. So you can really understand the unit economics of that particular product but we show you the ASIN and SKU, and then we show you how many orders you've had in the last 30 days. But this is where you can, in, this relative information is so valuable. Of the 1,686 orders that you've had, 
that made up 24% of all of your orders. So here I can look at this 1,684 orders made up 24% of all of my orders. So meaning this particular product does a quarter of the sales for me. And then here I show you the revenue that is generated from this product and that's made up also about a quarter, a little bit more than a quarter of all of the revenue that I've generated in the last 30 days. Again, we just keep going down the list and show you your top five best sellers. So here for this particular product, I've sold 846. Um, I've had 846 orders and that's made up about 12% of all of my orders. Um, next, we look at, and I'll skip this for just a second and I'll come back to worst sellers. So worst sellers are products where I have a lot of inventory, but I have not seen the same amount of sales. So here we've got the image, the name of the product, of course the ASIN and the SKU, and in the last 30 days I've only had 18 orders for this particular product. However, I have $61,000 um, in asset for this product, and that makes up 35% of all of my cash flow that I have invested, all of my asset value that I have invested in this business. So I can see that that number isn't looking good, That's two little orders for the amount of asset value I have and for my overall percentages. And so what I would do is I would look at this number and I would go investigate to see why, why is it that I have so few orders, um, even though I have so much inventory for this particular item. Um, there you can do flash sales, there's a number of ways that you can improve your, um, your listing to really allow you to increase sales for this particular product. And then it goes down the list by asset value so the next biggest item I have, I've got about $228 in assets for this particular product um, and I have had just one sale in the last 30 days and then it just sort of goes down the list. Let's come over here to look at order status summary. So your order status summary essentially is just telling you what's going on, how many orders you have in, uh, in this, in pending, in unshipped, shipped, canceled, and refunded, um, and what the revenue I've generated from those orders. So it's really straightforward, but it's a really nice visual understanding and image of, of how your business is doing in terms of shipping things out. Especially if you are doing FBM, this becomes obviously more relevant to you then. All right, let's take a look at this bottom half now. Um, here I look at my refunds. So in the last 30 days, I've about, had about $2,000, a little over $2,000 in refunds, and that has gone down by 10%, which is wonderful news. Lost sales from stockouts. This essentially means that I would have made a sale, but because I didn't have enough inventory, I missed out on that sale. And because of that, if I do not restock in the next 30 days appropriately for my, in, within my, all of my products, within my entire catalog, I could potentially lose $3,000, um, a little over $3,000. That equates to about 164 orders. So this is where you would click here, it would take you into our restock module, and we would tell you exactly what you need to restock by supplier, by product. We show you your past sales, we show you your forecasted sales, and so you can actually go into the system and create a purchase order for your supplier or do an FBA transfer to make sure that you avoid any of this lost sales because of um, poor inventory management. Um, the next piece here we've got is um, setting a goal for your gross sales. So we've got this module here, KPI, and that really is the goal of this module is to essentially help you keep and track your goals. So if you've got goals for your gross sales, then you can actually get started here and it'll take you to this module so you can actually go in and um, add your goals for rear revenue, for your orders, for a particular product, for um, all of your products. Um, and there is another video that details how to use this module, but this is a quick, fast way to get there. 
Um, next, we've got, I'm going to jump over here to recent FBA shipments. Um, so this is what this is telling me is um, of all the recent FBA shipments I've created, um, here it tells me the last few shipments, but of all of those, how many are in working status, how many have been received or in receiving status, and how many have been canceled? What's really relevant here is to look at for the, those that are in receiving status is to look at the cost value. This is how much cash that I have. This is my cost of goods that I have put $66,000 into all of this stuff that's going on. There's five, it's made up of five shipments. And here is my estimated profit that I'm going to get when I sell all of this, all of these products. So when I sell everything that's in receiving right now, I will get $147,000. So here you can very sort of quickly see where's my cash flow um, and what my profits are going to be, uh, my gross profits are going to be when I end up selling everything within this shipment. Last but not least, here are our recommendations. So in order for us to give you a more accurate um, uh, uh, pro gross profit margin, we need to understand your cost of goods. And you can update that in bulk um, using our Excel sheet, or you can do it at an individual product level. So my recommendation usually is, if you have um, you know, less than 10 products, it's really simple just to go in here and do it within the UI. You can go into product performances, anywhere you see a product image, uh, a product name, sorry, you can click on that and it'll take you to that product where you can update the cost of goods. The other thing that we're telling you here is um, how many of your items do not have a supplier attached to it. The reason we want you to add your suppliers to your products is so we can give you more accurate forecasting data. And the way we do that is for each supplier, we ask you what your lead time is for restocking. And based on what that restock cycle is for you, um, we will tell you more accurately when and how much you need to reorder for any given product based on your sales, based on seasonality, and there's a lot of different factors. Uh, there is a whole nother video that talks about restock, but this is just a quick understanding of what you need to do in order to optimize the system fully. And here in terms of integrations, we also integrate with Amazon ads. So if you have not, if you are, if you're doing advertising on your Amazon account and you have not integrated the ads, you know, it'll take you, there'll be a step here that takes you to do that. Um, we also integrate with Walmart. And so if you have not yet integrated with Walmart, then you can do that as well. So this is the basics of the Business 101 dashboard. You can follow another video that will be linked after this one that shows you how to um, create a customized dashboard with more advanced widgets. Thank you.